Hi there everybody and welcome to another video. On today's video I have this uh, Mercedes B-Class, the W246 uh, chassis 2016. This is a B180 diesel. Um, I'm gonna be changing the rear brake pads in this car. Um, so the rear brake pads. So before we start, we need to do a couple of things. Um, one is obviously get your locking wheel nut for removing the wheels. You're gonna need to jack up your car. I'm working on a ramp, so I'll get I'll get it up on the ramp. It's a bit easier. Um, also, we need to get the bonnet open. So to open the bonnet, if you get down here, you'll find this red lever there and you can pop your bonnet open. So if we get bonnet here, if you put your hand through there, you'll find a little um, bit sticking up. But you need to move to one side so you can get release the bonnet. And obviously it'll be easier with two hands, but that's the one. And also then you have this thing here, that stick to get to hold the bonnet up here so let's get that there bit of a bugger when you are um, holding a, a camera and so what i want to do here is open the brake fluid reservoir here i'll just take that cover off um i can see if you shine the light on this container, you can see how much fluid you have. So this is sitting below the max line. Um, now what happens is that sometimes uh, people, when they are servicing the car, uh, if that is sitting below the max, they will top her up. Um, however, this goes down because the pads are wearing down. Um, so if you do top it up, to keep it at the max while the pads are wearing down. When you push, when you replace the pads and you push the pistons back, the fluid will overflow and will come out of here. So um, either you have to remove some of it, you can siphon it out with a syringe or something, you can suck it out um, if, you, if there is too much in it. I think this might be okay when I push the pistons back. However, uh, just as a, being a little bit precocious, I'll just put a little bit of paper around here. So if any comes out, might drop onto this paper and get absorbed. Uh, you can put a bit of rag or something around there. If, if it, it really is full, it will definitely drop so you may want to siphon it out really because otherwise it will make a mess all the way down and that stuff is a little bit corrosive so anyway um if you don't open this cap and you push the pistons back there will be pressure it'll be harder to push the piston back so that's uh just one thing to do there and then the next thing that we need to do here is basically okay so i'm just inside of the car now and uh what we need to do is we need to release because the rear brake um the rear brakes the handbrake is an electronic brake uh we need to do a little procedure here in order to wind the electric motors back so we can push the pistons back and um, so to do that if you get your ignition on um just make sure you have the miles showing there um because yeah, if you have a different menu it sometimes doesn't work so just have the miles showing there switch the ignition off again and then put it in the put your key in uh one turn don't get all the lights on and then make sure the the handbrake if it's on make sure it's off and then you can press the phone button here and the okay button 
until uh, this menu comes up that says um, vehicle data, roller test, pad replacement, and assist plus. So go to pad replacement and press OK. And then it says to remove, to move to fitting position, press OK. To cancel, go back. So if you press OK on that, the rear um, calipers will wind the electric motor back. And once it's finished, so fit in position, reach to exit, fit in position, press OK. Um, so once we finish changing the path, uh, we'll come back to the car and press OK in that. But um, you will notice if you leave this like this, it will switch off to save the battery anyway. So I'm just gonna put the ignition off here. Uh, when you come back, you will find the menu appears, so reappears. So you can switch the ignition off and just leave it like that. That will go off by itself. Um, and then, um, like I said, when you finish, come back, put the ignition, uh, put the key in, position one, and that will come back up because you need to press OK in order to wind uh, the electric motors out. So, or in, I mean. Um, so, let's get, uh, let's remove the wheels and start removing those calipers. So with a 17 mil socket, I'm going to remove these wheels. Obviously, I'm using an air gun, so it will be easier for anyone working um, without an air gun to release this while the car is on the ground. Because uh, you will find that if you're using a, a power bar to undo this, <coughs> the wheels will turn unless you have the handbrake on. And obviously, um, then you can release it, but then <coughs> you need to release the handbrake afterwards for uh, the purpose of changing the path. So it's up to you how you do it, but <coughs> obviously with an air gun, life's a lot easier. Okay, now we um, expose the caliper there so we can undo the bolts that hold that caliper. Okay, so you're pretty much gonna need all of these tools to remove the rear uh, brake pads. Um, this here is to push the pistons back. So it's a winding kind of tool. You have to wind it uh, in and then you wind it out um, in order to push the piston back that's what it looks like this is comes with that and these two here are to operate this so 24 mil and 19 mil obviously um, there might be different types of tools out there uh, with different so whichever one you choose may need a different size wrench so these two are for that um, I have a ratchet here with a 13 mil. Um, however, this is to remove the bolts that hold the caliper onto the carrier. But um, you may find that you haven't got enough room for that, so you will need a spanner. This is a 13 mil spanner, and this is a 13 mil with a ratchet just to make things a little bit easier. Um, so I can remove it a bit faster. But you can do with this, you don't really need that. So if you use that, you don't quite need that either. Uh, and this here is to hold, when you remove the bolt of the caliper, on the other side, there will be a nut, like something that looks like a nut that will be moving together. You need to hold that in order to remove the bolt. You will see on the video. So I use one of these 
um, or a pair of pliers just to hold it and remove the nut. And also a wire brush to clean your calipers and whatnot. And you may need a little bit of copper grease, um, just a bit. Sometimes you get some copper grease on the new parts themselves. Uh, you may also need some brake fluid if for any reason you need to top up your container but normally that's not the case um, and the uh, flathead screwdriver is always uh, uh, it's not essential but in this case it might be needed just to push your um, parts out sometimes the parts get a little bit stuck so you may want a flathead to take them out so let's get started okay so now we need to um, release this bolt here and this one up here and for that I'm gonna use my ratchet with a 13 mil um, <laughs> actually my ratchet will be good for the top one but it won't be good for this one because there's a brake line there so anyway let's loosen this one a little bit <clears throat> now when you loosen that a little bit you, may, you will find that this starts rotating as well so for that purpose I normally use one of these pliers to hold that there. I must admit, even this one here is sitting at a bit of an angle because the back of the ratchet is touching this part here. <laughs> so it's not sitting flush, but rather like a little bit like this, which is not really good to be fair. So you could use a spanner instead, which is what I'm gonna use here. I'm gonna use the spanner. Right. Let's loosen this 13 mil spanner. Okay. Once that is loosened. Again, we can use pliers there. Hold that there and just open and if you have a spanner like this one with a ratchet <laughs> then it'll be a little bit faster Otherwise, you just have to be patient, <laughs> very patient. Okay, so I'm not going to fully remove this just now because uh, I want to just uh, make sure that this is loosened. Well, actually, we can actually, actually, we can take it out. Should be fine. They both out. You can see that they have some Loctite as well. So depending on the kind of um, the make of parts you buy, they might actually come with some new bolts, which already have Loctite. Otherwise you might need Loctite. Right, let's get this out. I'm just gonna put it up there. 
ultimately you want to be careful not to bend this too much so just want to sit it up here somewhere or you can even cable tie it um, but so these are my pads here you might notice you may notice they're not looking tragically bad but um, the reason I'm changing them is because on the other side uh, this pad is worn down a little bit more so than, than this side and as a result um, I want to change them and you will have to you have to change both sides anyway so let's push this out that's it pads are out and we also have this metal clamps here so sometimes the new pads come with new ones of these but sometimes they don't so you may want to remove them without damaging them and give them a clean so i haven't got my pads yet they are coming soon but uh until then i will wire brush this a little bit and if i get new ones then great if not never mind um, and also you may want to wire brush all this area here where these metal bits sit same up here just wire brush it this is not really that dirty it's not that bad at all at all There can be a lot of dust coming out of here, so make sure you wear a mask or something. Or we'll try not to breathe all that dust. No need to go too crazy on it. Um, just keep it a bit of a clean. Then you can rinse it with some brake cleaner. And also, um, you can inspect, make sure these are moving free, they're not stuck. Because uh, sometimes if a, a hole forms here, then uh, water goes in there and this can start, become hard to move in, until they actually cease. Um, same with this one, make sure it's moving free. Uh, you can actually remove these they just come out like this and these are just some dust covers on them just make sure they have grease I think that's a uh, molly grease just push it back in there that's like uh, it's got some suction <laughs> so that's it really move that uh, obviously uh, clean that I was, I was just wire bright brushing that um, unless you get new ones so gonna wait for the pass now um, actually before I go uh, your caliper also what we need to do we need to wind the piston sitting here back so we'll have a look at that in a second okay so we're gonna need one of these tools to wind that piston back I've got the piston there and uh, we need to push it back basically and for that you're gonna need one of these tools otherwise you won't be able to to do it so that kind of fits in there this kind of goes in there 
Then we wind this. Back. Okay, so I have a 90 mil which fits my tool here. Okay, so I have to clip this. Okay, it looks like in this case scenario we only need to wind this in. It doesn't matter if you you don't have to really turn the actual piston. You can just push it back. In some other models, I think Volkswagen, you literally need to wind the piston in. Okay, that's all the way in. Now, just gonna release that so we can take this out. That's it. Piston is all the way back. And uh, now what you could do is you could wire brush your piston a little bit, just clean it around the areas here. Um, but if you're using a wire brush like the one I was using, basically, so this is my wire brush here and you can wire brush along these areas, you will see a lot of dust coming out. However, um, be careful with this rubber here, the rubber that is around the piston, um, because this will easily puncture or damage this rubber. And you, you want to also inspect this rubber a little bit, make sure it's got no holes, because if it does have holes, again, water will go in there and will seize the piston. So just make sure the condition of this rubber is good and be very careful with your wire brush because sometimes you can be wire brushing down here and you will catch that uh, rubber there and possibly damage it. Right, so now uh, I'm waiting for my pads. I'm gonna give this a clean and then uh, we'll fit the pads. Okay, so um, I got delivery of my pads. These are the ones that I got. Oh, Bosch for Mercedes B class, A class for models chassis W246 and 176. So anyway, don't don't just go by the part number that I have there. You uh, make sure you get the correct ones for your vehicle. Sometimes they can be slightly different. Um, so let's get this open. And so we have some new bolts there and we have pads so i was checking a document online yesterday it was saying that these get tightened to 130 newton meters it seems like quite a lot but, um, but they are quite uh, big bolts so I'm going to double check that document, make sure that is the torque setting they're talking about for the bolts going into the uh, caliper carriers, because sometimes uh, you get that kind of torque on the carriers going onto the, uh, that bolt onto the hub. So I'm going to double check, because uh, I don't know, it seems like a quite a lot so let's get this out I wonder if there's any um, 
Sometimes you get some pulse setting from this. Sometimes not. Uh, probably not in this case scenario. So we'll have to uh, revert back to the computer. I'm gonna have a look at that. Okay, so I had a look at the torque settings again and uh, the bolts that hold the caliper to these uh, guide pins here or sliding pins uh, is uh, 35 newton meters. Um, so the, the one that is um, 130 is uh, the one that holds this piece to this hub. So that would be this one here, I think. The ones sitting on the back. Anyway, so I'm refitting this. I didn't get new ones of this on the kit. So I clean them. I put a little bit of copper grease on them, on those uh, parts. So now we can put this back. Just have to push them back in. Same with this one. Just press them back in there. Um, now we can fit our pads. So, so that slide in there nicely. And then we can fit our caliper back. I'm not really going to add any uh, copper grease on these ends now. Uh, these days uh, the pads have uh, another padding here which uh, prevents um, that noise, squeaking that normally you would get with older uh, pads. Right, so let's get this back home in here. Okay, so let's go in. So it will be difficult to get a torque wrench around here anyway, because of the space. Um, so I might try to get the one up here, but there's no way I'm going to get my torque wrench on the one down here. But uh, 35 newton meters is not a lot of force as such, so, Or just get a feel, maybe get a feel with your torque wrench for the top one and then tighten the bottom one accordingly. They have uh, the locking lock tight anyway, so they are not going to come out. So let's get this. Okay, I got that one anyway. Okay, so I have my torque range set to 35. Don't even know if I have enough room here to 
get it on there or not, but I'm going to give it a try. That's going to be a little bit difficult. Um, let's try. Let's try that with a universal joint, maybe. Just a little bit more straight. And that is it really. That is 35 newton meters. So I will definitely won't be able to get this one. It just won't fit, but it's not a lot of force as you can see. So just grab your spanner and with your spanner close that bolt and you'll definitely be able to achieve 35 newton meters. And I can carry on typing this but uh, um, we don't need to that that is 35 newton meters there so we don't need to over tighten them either and uh, now you can see that's uh, loose um, obviously we need to go now into the car and get the brake um, release the motor again so before I do that just gonna put a little bit of copper grease around here for fitting our wheel and also before I do and go and do the computer I'm going to um, do the other side the other side first so I'll finish the other side and we'll go, we'll go into the uh, computer and I'll also fit the wheels back on. Okay, so I'm just doing the other side. Um, just one thing I wanted to mention. If you get some um, copper grease on your disc, uh, for any reason, you contaminate it a little bit, um, then you can just uh, get some brake fluid uh, clean or some brake cleaner, basically. Spray it on your disc and uh, just give it a wipe that will get rid of any uh, grease that you may have put in there by mistake so not a big issue just give it a clean and you'll be just fine so just wipe it out i think it goes without saying but just in case i'll say it and uh yeah so i'm just about finishing this side now and then we'll go and look at the computer in the car okay so i finish wheels are back on cars on the ground and uh, we can have a look at what's happened here to the brake fluid now you may be able to notice that the fluid is gone up to the max as we push the uh push the pistons back so um, it's not fully at the max, but uh, we have to allow for the front pads that may be also a little bit worn. Um, so now the first thing we can do here is get back in the car and uh, switch the ignition to position one there and you get the message there. So press OK on that button there. So fitting position has been exited to confirm press OK. And that's it. Now we can also pump 
the brake pedal a little bit, make sure it's hard. And we can test our handbrake here. Just make sure it's operating properly. And it seems just fine. So now, now the um, brake fluid may have gone down a little bit, not much. A little bit from the max mark there. So I'm not going to top it up to the max because uh, that is just uh, the front parts are wearing out as well a little bit. So I mean a tiny bit. Um, so I'm going to leave it like that and we can go ahead and close this and also we didn't have any of the fluid what's going on here right. overflowing so our paper is nice and clean um, and uh, well that's pretty much it so I do hope the video hope uh, helps um, don't forget to subscribe and uh, don't forget to give me a like if the video was helpful so we'll see you on the next video and thank you for watching